So guys, I apologize for the crazy tarp. We actually have quite a bit of wind going on right now, so uh, the tarp's just gonna be blowing wildly. But today I'm out here to do part two, or yet another part, of Mora, or Mora Garberg versus the world. And today the knife that we have going up against the Mora is a iconic knife, a legend in the bushcraft community. It vastly became a legend and was just grew like wildfire. Still is very popular today and that is the Topps Fieldcraft made by the Brothers of Bushcraft. And this is what we're going to be putting up against the Mora Garberg today. Now as per usual, <laughs> This tarp is so crazy, but as per usual, the first thing we're going to start out doing is feather sticking with both knives and then starting a fire with their respective fire sticks. Now, uh, that is going to be with a ferro rod. Now, both of these, while this is in a used condition, it is still pretty close to factory. Obviously, I have not removed the paint coating on this. I have not sharpened the spine on this, and that is just because neither of these knives have been modified, and I don't want to give this knife an unfair advantage over this this knife so both are in a pretty unmodified state once again I will say the tops has around three or four years of use put on it or yeah right around three and a half years of use put on it so it is certainly more used but it is still very sharp uh, so that's the only change this isn't gonna be quite stock but as far as grind goes but as far as it goes for the most part this will be as close as I can get it in all reality so once again, no sharpened spine, no paint removal, or anything like that. So without further ado, I'm just kind of going to split this up here, or yeah. Without further ado, I'm just going to split this piece of wood up here. I'm not going to do a hardcore baton test with this, because I already know the tops and the Garberg are already such troopers when it comes to batoning. Uh, neither of these knives would baton, or this one's probably going to actually baton. Last test, the competitor will go first, and we're actually going to start off with some light batoning. I totally forgot to mention that. Uh, once again, uh, I'm not going to do any hardcore batoning with this because I understand not everyone believes in hardcore batoning uh, or batoning at all. I am going to do at least medium batoning, especially with this uh, Topps Fieldcraft. However, I'm not that scared about this knife uh, breaking. I've batoned this thing hundreds of times. It's really not going to break. So that was quite easy. Once again, something you'll notice with uh, the Topps Fieldcraft as opposed to, uh, or just like, the um, BRK Bushcrafter. They're both Scandinavian ground knives. I'll redo that. They're both Scandi ground knives, so they're going to wedge the wood very well. So once again, no super hard thing, and I will say for sure, uh, the Topps Fieldcraft is a lot better at batoning, but once again, that goes back to the fact that, hopefully you guys can see this, the Topps Fieldcraft on the right here is about, I'd say, at least a little bit thicker. It's not gigantically thicker, but when it does come to batoning, especially with Scandi grinds, every millimeter of thickness does count, and the Tops Fieldcraft is so I want to mention sure. here while doing the feather sticking is the stainlessness of the Tops Fieldcraft versus stainlessness of the Garberg. And I did I forgot totally forgot to mention this with the BRK Bushcrafter, but it really doesn't matter because CPM 3V is a quite stainless steel. I mean it's certainly gonna rust if you let it, but it's it's a lot more rust resistant than something like this Topps Fieldcraft. And that was something that I wanted to mention because with the Topps Fieldcraft being made out of 1095 high carbon, the it is a lot more prone to rusting. And I think you guys can tell here, I have force patinaed the blade just to kind of help alleviate that. But even still, if you let any moisture build up at all without promptly wiping it off, of this uh, 1095 it will rust on you fast whereas with the Sandvik steel that the Garberg is using man I cannot feather today but the Garberg is using uh, is very rust resistant I've been quite impressed I have been at times specifically testing to see uh, just how rust resistant it is and I have to say it is very rust resistant so with that one, there's really not a whole lot of fear, at least for me, 
that it's going to rust. So with this knife, something that I do want to note, much like the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, this is also a, um, what is it, a, a convex Scandinavian grind. So you'll note that with this one, once again, doing the more Morse Kohansky styled feather sticks is actually exceedingly hard to do. And I found with convex Scandies that if you don't, or if you try and do the Morse Kohansky styled um, feather sticks, it is our feather hard. sticks. Some of the feather sticks from this Topps Fieldcraft. I will say it did pretty underperforming there, but I think in overall it's pretty, or I think overall it is pretty good. Um, one thing is, I will say, if you don't do the traditional styled uh, feather sticks, like that, that is essentially a traditional styled feather stick that I'm doing here, and it tends to be that more just normal Scandi grinds tend to be able to do this, whereas a convex Scandi grind will not. Even still, this is pretty tough. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Morris Kohansky, he must have been like some crazy person, but anyways. doing more of a modern times or more of a modern uh, feather stick and less of the old school Morse Kohansky feather stick, you can see that the tops does quite well. However, you will note that uh, it is certainly a little bit trickier to do this with this Topps Fieldcraft, just for the fact that, once again, that thickness that's really nice in batoning also is extremely hard to fully properly use uh, when doing smaller, lighter tasks. You can see that this one in particular, as you can see, uh, is very thin, and I kind of did that for a reason. Here are the two respective feather sticks. <laughs> Not the most impressive with the Topps Fieldcraft. Uh, pretty impressive with this one. This is the Morse Kohansky styled feather stick, and this is more of a modern styled feather stick, in case you guys are wondering. Um, there is a little bit of differential in them, but first is going to be the Topps Fieldcraft. And as always, just to have the most fair comparison, and I really want to test here just how the, how many, or how hot the sparks are, I'm going to be using, just like in the last test, I'm going to be using uh, some natural material. This is uh, Aspen Inner Bark. And this stuff catches sparks from the ferro rod. And of course, this is the test control ferro rod. Same Mora. Uh, or it's probably I should light my fire, but it, it's sold with the more L dress And so that's the ferro rod we're going to be using for this test now To preserve this ferro rod. I am not going to be using the shango notch Which if you guys are unfamiliar with this knife the shango notch is this little cutout here You guys can see in the metal and you use that for those who don't know you essentially set your ferro rod, if you were to use it, which I'm not going to, you have to use non-mittened hands, and then you essentially set it on your tinder, and then you use it, using uh, holding it like this, you essentially come straight down and onto it. This, however, has been known, especially if you have a thinner or more used ferro rod, it will snap that ferro rod really fast. It also creates serious gouges in the ferro rod, and 
will essentially diminish the effective life of a ferro rod drastically. However, if you are in an emergency situation and you just need, you know, sparks, you just need them, then the Shango notch may be usable. However, I found with the Topps Fieldcraft, the up here where the grind is, this is a 90 degree. So that's what I'm going to be using personally for this test. I'm going to try and see if I can do this without mittens first. Okay, one moment. Well, I can get this to work normally, but uh, this still resounds a unfortunately truthful answer about this knife. And there we go. So there you guys go. Took a few strikes there. And uh, hopefully I can get some of these feathers on there. Either way. Still caught, and you guys can see there, it took quite a few tries. Uh, I'm One, I'm not as practiced, I will say, doing that. That takes a little bit of special skill to make sure that you hit on the grind there. But it can be done, as I showed you guys there, hopefully. Um, but like I said, it does take a little bit of special skill. And honestly, I would say that is probably the thing I like the least about the Topps Fieldcraft is that because they put this paint on there, and I know in newer versions, I don't think they put the paint there. Uh, or in some versions you can get, you can get without paint. But even still, they don't sharpen the uh, back of the ferro rod. Or not the ferro rod. They don't sharpen the back of the spine of this knife. So it really uh, sucks in that way, and you still have to use either the Shango notch or this, you know, area up here, which I prefer to use the area up here because, once again, it allows you to get pretty close to your fire, and, you know, you can set your knife down like this, and if it'll go, <laughs> that's the thing. It does take some special skill, but, you know, you can get it to go. As I've shown in the past, you can get it to go. It does work, uh, though I think the, really the designers of this knife wanted you to use the Shango notch, but I just hate the Shango notch. The Shango notch, in my opinion, is a very terrible thing uh, because, like I said, it really rips up your ferro rods and or snaps them. And the last thing you want in a survival situation to do is snap your ferro rod. So... Anyways, guys, that's the fire starting for last time. I think this is going to go very easily, uh, especially because, you know, the back of this is sharpened. And so I think this is going to go pretty easy. And it's going to light up pretty fast if I can actually hit this target. So you guys can see, especially with the last test, you know, not everything. I'm not trying to make this knife look artificially better than it is but it just so happens to be really good. So anyways, there you go. Will it catch? <laughs> there you go, I think I finally caught. So anyways, guys, once again, the fire test, you know, starting a fire with this Garberg is extremely easy. And that is just because, like I said, uh, Mora really took the time and it's the exact opposite of this Topps Fieldcraft, you know. Mora took the time to actually sharpen the spine on this. And I understand some knife makers do not like to sharpen the spines because somehow you can cut yourself with a sharpened spine. I don't really know how that would happen in my normal use. I would never even see that as a potential risk, but apparently it can happen. But for whatever reason, that's why they don't like to do that, I guess, some knife makers. But in my opinion, I really appreciate a sharpened spine, and that is the exact reason right there. I also don't care for any special types of, like, Shango notches and, you know, any of these types of fancy things because, you know, they're really cool on the drawing board and you know they look really cool on the knife but in all honesty you know the functionality is so debatable 
guys, now getting into notching. Once again, just like last time, I'm going to be doing just a few notches and woodworking, just a little bit of woodworking here to uh, show you guys just how these knives, you know, work on wood and uh, just how they are in comparison to each other. So, not sure, once again, how much of this I'm going to show because I don't want this to get too boring, but I will definitely roll in uh, in the end and show you guys the comparative work that these two do. Now, I will say uh, the Topps Fieldcraft has always been a really good standby for me for crafting. Once again, it has a nice strong tip, so it de definitely, much like the Mora Garberg and much like the Top or the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, they are easily able to make netting needles, both of them, or all three of them really, and that is something that I really like because I think very often in the knife community a lot of people talk about how tip strength is unnecessary in an outdoors knife, and you know, once again, it goes back to more of your personal experience. If you don't use your tip in a lot of hard working conditions, then maybe you don't need as strong a tip. But in technical bush crafting, such as when you're using your knife to help peel bark on a, a birch tree, or you know making a netting needle for making nets to catch fish, uh, having a strong tip is actually a very nice thing to have. So tip strength is very important for me at least because I tend to follow more of doing the bush craft kind of tasks but if once again if you don't really do as many bush crafting tasks which is okay uh, you may not need that strong tip so guys <laughs> now the sun has actually come out quite a bit so One more. there we go so guys there you can hopefully see this isn't too overexposed I hope um, but you can see there that I've done a few notches with it the tops fieldcraft as always is a very good performer it is very surprising with this knife I apologize for slightly switching it up here <laughs> the battery had died and I actually had to go charge it up so anyways uh, these are the three notches I made with it, and of course I rounded the top on that. And you guys can see, uh, one thing that always impresses me with the Topps Fieldcraft, or that was done by the Topps Fieldcraft, one thing that always impresses me about the Topps Fieldcraft is just how good it is at doing very fine tasks. It, it never ceases to amaze me how well the Topps Fieldcraft performs with these uh, types of smaller tasks, things such as creating that pot hanger notch. This is a very small pot hanger not and it created it very well which is quite surprising because the width of this knife is around an inch and a half i believe if not an inch and three quarters so it's quite a wide knife and so for it to be able to perform like that is very good overall i do think this is just uh, pre-game thoughts i do think this knife will outperform as far as carving goes it will outperform the bushcraft or the uh, garberg but we'll see how it actually ends up going. Now we have a new piece of wood for the Garberg. Now, once again, I'm running out of time on my uh, card, so I'm actually going to try uh, time on my SD card, so I'm not going to film a whole lot of the carving on this one, so I apologize for that, but um, I will roll in primarily an afterthought and just kind of speak uh, at that point on what I thought of how the Garberg performed in comparison to the Topps Fieldcraft. Sorry for the airplane sounds, but there is the Mora Garberg's notches. Hope you guys can see that well. It actually did pretty well, I will say. But once again, I do think that the uh, Topps Fieldcraft beat it because ultimately, with the Topps Fieldcraft, 
um, I was able to do very precise work. If you look at these two in comparison, they're both a little rough around the edges because I haven't really spent that much time making them better. This one is just slightly more precise, and overall I found the tops field crap to be executed just a little bit better. I also apologize. Uh, I was rushing the first notch on this one, and I did nick myself with the, t uh, the Garberg, but that has no relevance to why I think the Topps Fieldcraft performed a little bit better in this particular test. I just think that overall the Topps Fieldcraft, as far as precision in working and making notches, is slightly better. Once again, it's not a gigantic difference, but it is slightly better in making notches. So overall, that has been my comparison between the Topps Fieldcraft versus the Garberg versus the world and I'm going to continue to make more knives or more pit more knives up against this Garberg and I've been really enjoying this series but uh, this has been a very interesting one I find it very interesting that a lot of these legendary knives like the Barker of Knives Bushcrafter and the Topps Fieldcraft they really are not as good uh, at fire starting as you might think they actually really both of them highly under impressed me when it came to uh, fire starting in particular but uh, once again this one was able to really pick it back up with uh, notching the the bushcrafter it really it did average in notching i would say but i really didn't think that the bushcrafter did any better than this knife or the garberg uh, as far as handles to something else i wanted to note uh, as far as traction goes i like the traction on the tops a little bit better too because with the tops uh, something that they don't do is that this is not a polished micarta. This is just a straight micarta. So what happens when this micarta gets wet is it gets very tacky. And that was something that I was actually taking off my gloves today because, one, it's warm enough, too. And secondly, when I was doing that, I noticed that uh, the micarta was just very tacky, especially when it was wet. Still, even right now, it's pretty traction or has pretty good traction to it but uh, it just gets very tacky when wet and I really like that because you don't feel like your hand is going to slip off or do anything however I wanted to note when crafting as well uh, something that's very annoying is the jimping because when you do a lot of notch work you're often like this and you tend to be digging you know straight down into the wood like this implying pressure and it just so happens that right where you apply pressure the most is right on those jimpings and those jimpings are not that comfortable to start off with so I've noticed that is probably one of my largest pet peeves uh, when carving are these jimpings whereas this one of course is free of all jimping as far as the traction goes uh, when wet and when dry this one just has overall a kind of rubberized plastic feel like it's a hard plastic but it does feel pretty grippy and I really don't feel any traction problems though once again it's not particularly tacky like this one almost feels like rubber when it's wet whereas this one it still feels just pretty much normal and it doesn't really feel like you want to slip off of it anymore but once again it doesn't feel any better so overall with these two knives it's pretty close uh, you know I'm not factoring value into any of these decisions so I mean I'd probably end up giving it to the tops in this case just because overall the tops it does have niceties like this bow drill divot on both sides uh, once again though the whole fact to it is that this one's a lot better with fire starting at least you know using this piece as a fire starter ironically too this one has an exposed rear tang that is also very sharp that you can use for uh, throwing ferro rod sparks unlike this one where it's uh, it's exposed tang unless you're using the shango notch is uh, pretty much dull so anyways guys uh, that's been my thoughts or uh, that's been my experience on these two uh, and just a head-to-head -head comparison against the two uh, don't forget to comment like share subscribe and let me know what your thoughts are you know which one would you choose if you had to choose so guys that's it and i'm out